El Cid, whose real name was Rodrigo Diaz de Vivar, was a legendary Spanish knight and military leader born around 1043 in the Kingdom of Castile. Rising to prominence during the Reconquista, a period of Christian reconquest in Spain, El Cid distinguished himself through his military prowess and unwavering loyalty. Despite facing political intrigue and betrayal, he remained a steadfast defender of Christian kingdoms against both Moorish and Christian adversaries. His most famous feat was the capture of the city of Valencia in 1094, where he established an independent principality. El Cid's valor and leadership earned him enduring admiration, becoming a symbol of Spanish chivalry and national identity. But what if history had a different fate in store for Spain's most legendary knight? We begin this series in the year 1066. Rodrigo has already earned himself the moniker El Campeador after fighting in service of King Sancho II, and in our first divergence from history, has been granted land south of Burgos to administer on behalf of the Crown of Castile. In this series, we have both long-term and short-term goals that we will set out to achieve. Our short-term goals are as follows. Serve King Sancho loyally in any wars he might wage against his neighbors. Secure our lineage by marrying and having a strong heir. Solidify our hold on southern Castile and expand our base when opportunity arises. And begin spreading our unique legend, the Song of El Cid. For our long-term goals, we'll look to history when forging our path. First, we will attempt to turn the tides of the Reconquista in favor of the Christian forces. Then, we will attempt to forge an independent principality in eastern Iberia. And, finally, become the most legendary knight of our time. Hello Wanderers, welcome to a brand new Crusader Kings 3 roleplay series following the legendary hero of Spanish history, Rodrigo Diaz de Vivar, otherwise known as El Cid or El Campeador. This is a character, a figure of history really, who played a very important role in the Iberian Peninsula during his time and was considered one of the greatest knights of chivalric ideal from this time period. He had a pretty long and storied life. This man not only served the kings of Castile, Lyon, but also served many of the Muslim rulers of the Iberian Peninsula as well, and then became an independent lord within his own right. Technically, he was still sworn to the crown of Castilion, but he was essentially independent in Valencia in later in his life. And so this is the character we're going to be playing. And to some extent, we are going to be trying to recreate some of that history, but also allowing for Crusader Kings 3 to send some curveballs our way. And we're also going to let you, the viewers, make some choices in this campaign as well. So keep an eye out for polls that may come at the end of the videos that will help direct us in our next actions. Uh, you will essentially be playing the role of the council of our great knight here. So without any further ado, let us get into it. Let's take a look at our character first and foremost. Count Rodrigo here. He doesn't start as a landed character in this uh, uh, start date, in any of the start dates uh, currently, actually. And uh, I went and gave him some land so that we could play with him. We do have Segovia and Olmedo. Segovia sounds a little familiar. Isn't that something to do with the Avengers movie? Is that where this happens? Uh, anyways, uh, that's where we're going to be starting here. We do serve the King of Castile, King Sancho, and we are his, his friend as well, so... We'll be getting more into the history of this character, what little bits of it I know. I'm sure that you guys in the comments will have a lot more information for me as well. But uh, yes, yeah, so let's take a look at our traits. Trusting, diligent, and brave. So you can tell that our character, he's not really necessarily an intrigue-focused character. You can tell that by our very low intrigue stats here. 
he is a knight. He's a brave knight. And he works hard at what he does. But, uh, you know, he's not uh, the type to go backstabbing and, and things like that. He just kind of goes with his gut, trusts his instincts, and, uh, you know, takes the, the brave move. Uh, we are a brilliant strategist, a gallant a strategist as well here. So we've got some really good traits buffing up our martial abilities. Uh, we are a, a knight of great chivalry. We've got open terrain expert, aggressive attacker, and flexible leader. Open terrain expert eh, might not necessarily be the best in this region of Spain here. It's pretty, pretty mountainous, some forests and things like that. But, you know, we should have some advantage in some of the places in central and southern Iberia at the very least. But we'll see how this uh, all plays into things. And we are, of course, a famous champion. Now, we got the title El Campeador when we were probably a few years younger than we start the game off here. Now, if I remember correctly... This uh, honorific came to Rodrigo when he slew an Aragonese knight in single combat during, I think it was a siege of Zaragoza or something like that. I'm not actually 100% sure on the details. I do recall reading that uh, he did earn this title for, for slaying a Aragonese knight. Now, uh, I can't quite remember what this means again either. Uh, the champion or the conqueror, mm, somebody can uh, fill me in in the comments as well. I will be butchering some of the Spanish names in this, but I will try my best as I always do and often fail. So it is just what it is, you know. You know how it is, how it goes. In any case, you can see our stats. It is how, uh, how we're going to be playing things, which is definitely a military focused campaign. We've got decent diplomacy. Our stewardship's not terrible either. So uh, we'll see how that factors into things. We have a couple relationships. Like I said, we've got this friendship with King Sancho. I don't know if that is actually 100% uh, historically accurate. Uh, I haven't read the deeper lore behind El Cid. And I know that there's a lot of tales about him, that there's uh, probably some, some deep history that I could go into. But uh, in any case, uh, I've brushed up a little bit uh, as far as uh, Wikipedia goes, at the very least. So we'll we'll be going with my scant knowledge. And like I said, you guys in the comments can help fill me in on the things I do not know. Uh, we also have another friendship here, Alvar Fenez. This, I'm assuming as well, is also a character from history here. And uh, because we start the game with this friendship as well, I didn't set anything here up. Uh, but he is uh, our courtier and our friend. He is brave, trusting, humble. Uh, he's a decent fighter too, so he's going to be pretty good in our court as well. So good to have him. And then we have a rivalry. Now, we don't actually start the game with this rivalry. I gave us this rivalry because Count Garcia Ordonez is actually a historical rival of Rodrigo. And he was a lord of Nayera. Uh, at some point, I think after the start date, he became lord of Nayera. But I gave him that title anyways, just to make things a little bit more interesting here. But this was another historical figure. And as far as I can tell, he was a rival of uh, Rodrigo here. So... That uh, That's all we got there. Now, you can see that we are not currently married. We are going to do something about that. And to go along with history, we are going to be marrying our historical wife, Jimena Diegas of Oviedo. And this was, in fact, El Cid's uh, wife in history here. I, I was very curious if she was in the game, and I... Went and searched her up, and yeah, she is in the game. So this is who El Cid was married to. And she wasn't just, you know, uh, just his wife, really. When El Cid ended up ruling Valencia, and after he died, she ruled it for, for a short time, at least, after he died, I believe. Um, 
I think uh, I'm imagining, and like I said, I haven't really read too much into the deeper history of this character, but I'm imagining with all the, the chivalric ideal and the legends and the mythology and the history that uh, surrounds El Cid, I imagine that she must have played a, at least a somewhat important part within his story. So we are going to actually arrange this marriage here. Uh, technically, she is our cousin, a uh, distant cousin at the very least, because the House of Vivar and the House of Oviedo are uh, both cadet branches of the House of Osorio here. Not 100% sure how historically accurate that is either, but uh, it is what we're going to go with uh, in terms of this game at the very least. So there we go. That is basically all of that set up and taken care of now. We are playing with the new Legends of the Dead DLC, and this is my first experience with it, so I probably won't know too much about it. I do notice that we have a new legitimacy thing. I don't think that was from the last DLC. This is a new thing, uh, is it not? Uh, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, and I just totally missed it in the Legacy of Persia DLC. But uh, anyways, we have uh, the legitimacy thing here, which I have not... Uh, been aware of at the very least. It's been a little while since I played the game, so. Uh, should be interesting to see how this plays up. I don't know how you build legitimacy, uh, but it does seem to give you some nice bonuses and some malices if you are too low. So we'll see how that all plays out. But more importantly, legends. And we actually have access to a custom legend, I believe it is, the Song of El Cid which is based off of one of the uh, historical uh, legendary tales of El Cid was, was called the Song of El Cid, I believe. And I guess they worked the, this into the game. Uh, Rodrigo Diaz de Vivar was once a dishonored lesser nobleman, now turned a king of his own. So this kind of tells the story of uh, how we ended up becoming the ruler of, of Valencia, later in our life. And to some extent, like I said, I would like to try to recapture some of that history throughout the playthrough if we can, but who knows uh, how things are going to play out. You will have seen that uh, uh, one of our goals is going to be to try to get ourselves an independent kingdom or independent lordship in the region of Valencia. So we're going to work towards that, but that's a long-term goal. Our short-term goals here are going to definitely be focused on supporting Castile and seeing how kind of things play out in that. And then once the opportunity arises and depending on how the story plays out, we'll try to eventually look for independence in whatever ways uh, seem natural for, for our character here. We're obviously not going to betray King Ch Sancho. He is our friend, but he does have two brothers who would probably love to uh, inherit his land? So we'll see. We'll see how long it lasts. Not not to mention his uh, middle brother here, his his uh, next youngest brother, is an elusive shadow, uh, and who probably wouldn't really mind doing away with his older brother and inheriting his kingdom. So we'll see how that all plays out as well. Uh, but. That, I think, is everything that we need to really go over. I mean, we do need to fill out our council here. Uh, we don't have any special custom characters or anything. We've got Rare Mayor Ramon here. Looks like he's going to be a good chancellor. Our steward is probably going to be Guillermo. We're going to make our Marshal Alvar Fanez our friend. And then we're going to give uh, the spy master to... Mayor Alvar here as well. So he's not particularly good at it, but we'll keep him happy because he is one of our mayors. And then we've got Thomas Johansson, our bishop from Sweden, who's come a long way to serve on the Iberian Peninsula for whatever reason uh, we do not know. Got to choose the lifestyle. We're going to go martial. We are going to go chivalry here as well. Uh, in terms of what branch we're gonna go down i'm not a hundred percent sure maybe gallant maybe strategist maybe overseer those are the three options we'll see i haven't decided yet 
Um, but in any case, that is everything. I think we can start time rolling here. The Iberian struggle, the peninsula is in turmoil. Conflict is born of its storied past. Muslims and Christian powers both seek to sway the people, but those who live and die on its own will ultimately determine its fate. I'll not let slip my vision for the homeland. By God, House de Vivar will weather the storm and see my will fulfilled. Certainly hope so, in any case. Otherwise, this will be a very short campaign. I gladly accept your marriage proposal. You will be joined with my sister, Jimena, in holy matrimony. May St. Bridget bless your union. Signed, Count Rodrigo of Asturias de Oviedo. Well, well, thank you. So we are now married to our historical wife, Jimena, which uh, perhaps I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, somebody can correct me if, I'm, if I am, but uh, I'm going to go with Jimena. Uh, in my pronunciation for now, but like I said, my Spanish is uh, very, very, very minimal here, so. With my marriage to Countess Jimena, the realm expects us to throw a suitably extravagant wedding celebration, and as well within my right to co collect a royal aid duty as part of this, but some may consider it tasteless to levy an extra tax during a time of jubilation. So one thing about Rodrigo El Cid here is that he was actually kind of considered a man of the people. Uh, and this kind of goes along with, I think, his, you know, building his legend and the story of this historical figure, you know, having the the man of the people kind of thing does really kind of boost uh, boost you in terms of how well you sit uh in the annals of history. So uh, I think we're going to go with the option here. Uh, I'll let my subjects enjoy the festivities without worry or care. The nice little boost to our prestige is not going to be too bad. And uh, yeah, I think that should be fine. So we're going to let some time pass. We're going to kind of just see what events happen and let things play out. I do want to take a look and show you what we got for our army and our military situation here. We do have eh, not a crazy amount of soldiers, 780, uh, but we do have a decent amount of men at arms. We've got some archers here. We've got some mangonels, and then we have these armored horsemen. And Rodrigo was a knight, but he was also a leader of men as well. And so I've given us this uh, contingent of uh, armored horsemen, which I believe... Uh, fits with the history of this character. And so, uh, yeah, I think that this is uh, quite quite fitting here. Greetings, my implacable vassal, Rodrigo, my brother, my companion, my confidante. Will you, be, will you join me in declaring our friendship to be the truest and brightest in all the world with all the debts of loyalty that entails? I do accept. Uh, that's, uh, you know what, we've got the best friend hook on him. He's got the best friend hook on us. Uh, going back to Legends for just a brief moment now that we've seen our, our military situation. I do want to aim to get this Legend spreading. We need money for that, so we're going to have to figure out how we can get some some money there. Uh, but yeah, affecting modifiers uh, gives us some bonuses. Looks like monthly prestige, level of fame. Uh, what else do we got here? Marshall goes up as well, and then also Men at Arms. So, yeah, uh, it'd be good to get this. I don't really know how they work. I mean, looks like there's three levels to it. So maybe if at the third level, we gain even more modifiers. I don't think we have the legend going right now. We need to get the first level of it, and we need this 240 to do that. World Legends, there's no World Legends going on either, so... And we'll see, maybe Court Chronicler has something to do with that as well. So, like I said, not really too sure. Haven't played around with it before. We're going to be learning it together. And if you've had the chance to play the DLC already, do let me know in the comments uh, if you've got any hints, tips, or tricks for spreading your legend. Because we are going to be spreading that legend all over Iberia. Uh, let's see, Liege is converting... Olmiedo, new law, your leech has passed the limited crown authority. That's fine. I would actually probably like to use our 
our hook that we have on the king. I, I'm tempted to get uh, guaranteed council rights because I just think that that is going to be helpful. We're going to take a little bit of a stress hit for abusing our friendship, but I think that this is I think that this is fine. I think that it's fairly in character as well. Um, just to kind of, you know, have a little bit of a pact with our best friend here and essentially saying that, you know, we are going to, you know, I will serve you faithfully on your council. Just do not uh, kick me to the curb, essentially. So we gain a little bit of stress. I think it's worth it just in case you know how the AI can be in terms of just kicking you off the council and things like that. And I do want to keep this council position because... Prowess plus three is great. Army gold maintenance minus 15% is excellent. Levy size plus 15% is also excellent. And a martial lifestyle experience, that's a big boon. So we want to keep that position if we can. Kingdom of uh, Mono... Oh, okay, that's just fine. Yeah, all right. Let's see. Petition liege? Uh, you know what? We could probably pay homage... You know what? I think we should. Let's demonstrate our submission. Let's go to the king and uh, and uh, pay homage. We're going to go straight there. Do we need a caravan master? I mean, we don't have really any good ones right now. And we doesn't look like we actually... Doesn't look like we actually need it. Oh, where'd, uh, where'd that option go here? Pay homage. Yes. Why? You are currently... Oh, looks like we're, what, are we already, already going? No, oh, there we go. Oh, Crusader Kings 3. All right, let's, uh, let's do it. We're not going to give him any gifts. We're not going to do anything like that. We are just simply going to go. All packed and proper, we finally have come to the point where we can start our journey to Burgos. All right, let's go. Anything interesting going to happen along the way? There is no danger, so probably not. And... <laughs> Really, it's not that far. It is known that the people of Lerma seem to profess a special devotion towards their knights and their legends. My lord, the knight says, it is most fortunate that you and I come to meet at this crossroad, for I am in search of a marvelous fountain, which water is said to cure all illnesses. If you were to help me in my quest, I shall pay homage to you. Oh, we are going to pay homage to the king, and you want to pay homage to us? Oh, Veko? Oh, wow, he's good. Uh, I shall never leave a knight unattended. Well, obviously we need to go and uh, find the, the holy water here. Let's do it. The knight leads us to a small clearing where a natural fountain glimmers. The light reflects on its surface with a blissful shimmer, and it makes the water look so bright that it feels like a second sun. Careful, a beast, a guardian. The knight points at a stag. Standing between us and the fountain. A stag? I mean, not really too worried about that. 71% uh, chance we kill the beast? That's decent. Uh, he'll join the court. I'll distract it. You get the water. Now nah, we're going to fight it. Come on. The beast wounds us. Ah, well, that's unfortunate. But you know what? We got that guy in our court anyway, so that's uh, that's all right. Servants usher me into King Sancho II's great hall in Burgos, where he sits his throne waiting to hear my pledge. I kneel at his feet and swear many oaths. He bids me to arise and confirms his satisfaction along with my rights to rule the lands I rule in his stead. So there we go. Gain some renown, gain some opinion with, uh, with the king, and some prestige, so that's not so bad. And now we shall return home. Now we did get a knight along the way and that is pretty good uh we do have an accolade available uh, i think we're gonna give the accolade to alvar our good friend here and uh i think i'm gonna set him up as valiant and idealist the banner of god sure uh, if you've got a better name for uh this accolade leave that in the comments below as well I'll choose the best one and we'll change the name of this accolade and there we go, Oveco has become the successor to that as well. So that's actually uh, pretty much perfect here. So there we go, we have returned home. Well done, well done. 
uh, you know, a little, a little the worse for wear, but you know, not, not too bad. We've sustained worse injuries, surely. Wounded, a taint within. I feel as a, oh, well, this is not good. We need a physician. We gain an infected wound. <gasps> not good. Uh, we found some physicians, though. Who do we have here? We've got uh, Elo, who is actually great at the job. We've got, oh, she's pretty good, Gar Elo. Oh, yeah, okay, we've got Elo. We've got Achai. He's alt alternative medicine. Um, I think we're going to go with a good uh, sp uh, Iberian woman here. Uh, so, yeah, that's what we're going to do here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think that, you know, it's worth the money here. Uh, we do need to try to stay alive if we can. Uh, do no more than what is necessary. Yeah, let's try it. Uh, there we go. Look, she took care of it. Perfect. Well, well we, why were we even worried? There was no, nothing to worry about there at all. So. Some of our early goals, like I said, is to serve the crown of Castile as well as we can. So we're going to be assisting our liege in any wars that he chooses to, to uh, go up against. And we are also going to be looking for opportunities to expand. But we're not going to really be expanding within, you know, against our people within our own realm, probably. I mean, if we have good reason to, you know, if this guy's son uh, here, Muniu, Minyu, I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. Uh, but if we. There is a deep and endless hole in my heart. Sancho was a constant companion and confidant and to which and to have him ripped from my life feels like a mortal wound that from which I will never recover. My hands clasped the note he gave me, the last note he will ever give me, I realized bitterly. I try to read it, but all I can do is move it away from my face that the precious words contained within it are not washed away by my tears. Though there is a crowd of many mourners around me, I've never felt so alone. I will never forget this day. <sighs> Oof, we could take a stress hit here, um, but I'll never forget this day. We experienced some level of catharsis, which is good. Mental break, wanton desires. Um, perhaps a new view of God will help me. No, probably not. A trip to the brothel. Uh, rakish? Were we historically a rakish character? I'm not entirely sure. We are diligent. Um, I think that we are going to... I think we're going to actually tough this one out. Just because we are diligent. If we were lustful or something like that, maybe, but... No, I think we're going to bite our lip and try to stay focused. But, wait, what the... Okay. No, wait, are we... No, we're not independent. Okay, I was confused there. So, Alfonso is now the king of, yeah, uh, Castillon. And, I mean, let's face it, he <laughs> probably was behind this. Um, I know I've seen this in... Previous playthroughs where uh, Alfonso will indeed do this exact thing and assassinate his brother to inherit. Uh, and I think this is actually essentially what historically happened um, as well was that Alfonso, whether he actually had his brother killed or not, because Sancho was, I believe, assassinated. Um, there were rumors that Alfonso was behind it. Uh, I remember reading that he had to like swear oaths in front of a church saying that he wasn't responsible for it. But, you know, I uh, like how did how did he die here? Died under mysterious circumstances. So, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> that's uh, the, are they really that mysterious? Uh, I I am not too sure if they are so. I mean, our, our friend was assassinated. Do we think that Alfonso, you know, I, I we're not stupid by any means. I wonder if we would be curious to like, you know, not necessarily trying to figure out like, you know, not going after the king specifically, but maybe we send our spy master in to try to determine 
what happened to Sancho? Who was responsible? I think that this would be something that we would obviously want to know. So for now, I guess our oaths of loyalty go to Castile, uh, Castilion here, and we are going to see what happens from here. I mean, this is going to provide some new opportunities, certainly. Um, potentially, you know, this is might help our, our quest for independence here because we aren't necessarily going to be quite as loyal to King Alfonso. And historically speaking, Alfonso, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> like exiled us at some point. I think, I think Rodrigo gets exiled twice uh, in his life. And both times he ends up serving uh, Muslim lords as well and actually fighting against Christians. And, uh, you know, we kind of we pl we played both sides. I'm pretty sure um, if there's any Spanish people in the audience and uh, I'm butchering your uh, legendary heroes history, uh, do do please correct me. But, uh, you know, I'm going to kind of do some reading up in between episodes and stuff, too. But. I mean, this is a this is an interesting start. So far, things are going relatively close to history, but I am curious how things are going to change in the future. And I'm curious what you guys think we should do in this current situation here. I think it's going to really depend on whether we find out if King Alfonso was responsible or not. Uh, perhaps our spy master will be able to find that out. We shall see, but we shall see in the next episode. So, Wanderers, until then, please do remember to subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button because there will be more videos in this series coming up very soon. So, until then, Wanderers, thank you for watching.